Hey. How are you holding up after what went down? Just checking to make sure you're in one piece. The usual. Hmm. That's good. <laughs> no, it's definitely not a typical experience. You had a memorable first day. Not everyone gets explosions and new death experiences. <laughs> Intense stuff like this rarely happens, and never to trainees. We try to gradually get recruits accustomed to our dangerous way of life, so it doesn't destroy them from the inside. On the first day, at least. Yep, you got some uncanny bad luck. Maybe you're more of a black cat than a hound of Hades. Okay, whatever. Let me know if you need treatment. There's a first aid kit here somewhere. Eh? I left the patch up a few scratches. By the way, I called the boss. I told him what happened. Yeah, everything. He said that they had been looking into some odd criminal movements inside the neutral territory. Hmm. I trust Stain. He's one of the few I do trust. We joined the Hades family around the same time. Been a while since we've known each other. We were both orphans before joining. The boss gave us a place to live, food to eat, and a purpose to call it on. I don't know about Thane, but that was the first time anyone had given me an opportunity to prove myself. The first time anyone had looked at me and saw, well, me. <laughs> Sorry, Pop. Guess I'm feeling kind of nostalgic. This was the first place I ever lived peacefully after I joined the family. Well, relative peacefulness. I had to bust heads and I fought with other criminals as my job, but I did that before I joined the family. The difference being that before, it never ended. It was never a moment of peace. But afterwards, I could come here and feel like I didn't have to have my guard up all the time. Yeah, my life was dangerous far before I joined. Well, I didn't get the score in the line of duty. I got it long before I joined up with the Hades family. Even if I can't see out of this eye, I know you looked at it. But even better than most about asking about it. No, I don't mind talking about it. It was given to me as a reminder of my worthlessness. So that I would wake up every day, look in the mirror, and know that I'm a failure. I guess that's how they wanted me to take it anyway. To see it and despair about it constantly. But it's just a scar. We all have them one way or another. I decided the day I joined that I would never get rid of or cover up my scars. The boss had offered to get a soul crafter to fix my eye and scar, but I don't know. I guess I see it as a symbol of strength, a proof of my survival. Something that says I'm more than the fate I was branded with. I'm not the wisest. 
But if there's any advice I could give, it's to know who you are. Sounds simple, but it's harder in reality. If you never ask yourself the hard questions of life, you will always have the wrong answers until you die. I know you're a good person. Hmm. Well, you saved my tail back at that shit show. Hmm. I disagree. Those small moments in your life, when you move without thinking, are the most important. Those moments where you cast aside everything weighing in your mind is where your truest self lies. Though, in the introductory guide to Soulcraft, it says it more like, When thy soul is not stained by fear, nor molded by desire, thou shalt know the truth that has always slumbered within. <laughs> I'm not just muscle, you know. I can read on occasion. Aside from being a werewolf, I don't know much about soulcraft. I studied a bit, but it just never clicked with me, I guess. There's more Thane's expertise anyway. Ah, uh, right. You don't know about that. Hmm. How do I explain? People are complex. Souls are the source of that complexity. Most souls are somewhere between good and evil. Very few are completely one way or the other. But a soulcraft is the molding of souls. There will never be evil soulcraft, otherwise known as curses. When you curse someone, you mold their soul instead of your own. It is forcibly deformed and made to carry out the orders the soulcrafter inscribed onto your soul. In my case, as a werewolf, I am cursed to inevitably turn into a horrific creature and succumb to my primal instincts and rip apart anyone in my way. <laughs> Do I change from the moon? No, I don't change from the moon. Most werewolves don't. Hmm. The reason you hear about that is because back in the day, before curse laws were put into place, curses were considered a normal form of soulcraft. And the moon was used as a common trigger for curses. You can think of advanced soulcraft and curses as a bit like coding, if you know anything about that. There are variables and conditions. Lots of people don't even know they are cursed until it's too late. It's a horrible practice. I know it may seem hypocritical coming from me, a killer for the Mafia, but there are things far worse than death. Having your very soul mutilated beyond recognition might be the worst. No, curses cannot be broken. Not with your life intact anyway. But they can be bent. <laughs> You don't find it odd that werewolves are super durable and heal fast, even if we weren't transformed. Doesn't sound much like a curse, right? 
Well, it's not supposed to be like that. And that's why I studied Soulcraft, so I could bend the curse placed on me for my benefit. It's still there, but it's altered. I guess that's just life, though. The sword will never stop trying to push you down. But no matter what, you don't stop fighting. You take everything meant to hurt you and use it to push back. Can you do that? Good. Oop, it's quite late. I suppose I should go to bed. <laughs> Promise you won't wake up with a lichen in your room. Good night, Pop. Sleep well. <laughs>